Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Coco and I love volleyball. So much so my channel is filled with tips, tricks, hacks, and anything you could ever need to know about volleyball. So today, let's talk about how hot it's been this summer and things that you need to do to prepare for volleyball tryouts coming up soon. Let's get right into it. Volleyball tryouts are really soon, and if you haven't noticed, it's been blazing this summer. Nationally, here in the United States, we've had a huge heat wave, with some of the temperatures hitting 100 in some places. I know that since I've been coaching outdoors, it's been hitting 100 a lot of the times when I'm coaching my clients, and we're having difficulty practicing and getting ready for the tryouts when it's so hot. With temperatures skyrocketing everywhere, there are some things that you need to do to prepare for volleyball tryouts the best that you can using what you have. On my channel, I've started a new kind of series called the No Net Series, in which we talk about ways that you can practice volleyball at home without a net. I found that throughout the years of coaching volleyball, it's really important for you guys to learn how to practice at home, and a lot of you all don't have access to a net or a gym in which has a net. So I thought it would be best to include everybody and make sure that volleyball is inclusive in its learning. So please check out that No Net series, so that way you can start learning how to pass at home and learning some of the most important drills to build those foundational skills before tryouts. So conditioning is one of the things that volleyball is very, very, very common, right? So conditioning can be a lot of things. At volleyball workouts, they do have a lot of conditioning there, but some of you all might not be at volleyball workouts and you need some ways that you can do conditioning at home. Here are some things that we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about the importance of volleyball workouts and conditioning tips and tricks. But before we start, this video is sponsored. So let's take a moment to thank our sponsors for this video. It has been an unbelievably hot summer. And with everything I know for a fact, because it's been so hot, I don't wanna work out outdoors. I love working out indoors where there's air conditioning and I'm able to get my best workout in. That's why I wanna say thank you to today's sponsor, Yesel. The Yesel bike came in the mail and it was so easy to put together. I love how I can put it near my plant area so that way I can see outside and the hot sun while I'm getting my workout in indoors. Yesel is seen as a Peloton alternative and the one thing I love is the screen because baby, I love watching TV while I work out. I love to get my stretches in and making sure that my body is nice and limber, getting those dynamic stretches in before I get on the bike and making sure that I have the bike at hip angle so that way it's appropriate for my height because I'm a tall girly. For me, I know I specifically like to ride during either the morning time or early afternoon so I can see outside and see my neighbors in the hot sun again. But the one thing that's really cool is the screen turns to the side. So that way, if I do want to work out on the side, I can do so. I can also watch YouTube videos, like my own videos, and I can also access their app. The app was so easy to navigate. They have lots of different specialized classes that you can use and you can do. I loved how they have different programs that are more than one day so that way if I want to do an impact program I can and it was really great to see the trainer on there. It's an inner strength and endurance program. Welcome back to the bike. This is a 20. What's even better I can watch my show. If you know you know. Like I said, turning that screen to the side, I'm able to get some exercises in, put a workout class on, use a Yesel app, so that way I can do some of their off-seat classes and make sure to get some of that dynamic stretching in. Thanks to Yesel and check the link in the description. So, one of the things that I like to do for conditioning is I like to do a mix of indoor and outdoor. I've done a ton of videos on my channel talking about things that you can do both indoors and outdoors so that way you can kind of get some more exercise in. The reason why we do conditioning in volleyball is because there is some times in volleyball, well, it's, number one, is an active sport, but number two, you have to be ready to go and have that agility to go when needed. So when we think about volleyball, yes, a lot of it may be stationary in the sense of your position and when you're moving and stuff, but you gotta be quick. And that's where conditioning comes in. With these temperatures rising very, very high, there are only so many things that you can do outdoors. One of the things that I like to recommend to my clients and which is very common in volleyball tryouts is running a mile or running some type of length or distance. 
it's so common at tryouts. Put down in the comments if you've had a tryout and you have had like the first thing you had to do was run. For my first tryout, when I was trying out for JV back in 10th grade, we had to run 10 laps, like just out the gate. Just go run 10, just casual 10. And I remember huffing and puffing and how hard it was and how difficult it was. And I had no like prior athletic experience prior to that and it was just very challenging and there are some things that I took away from that experience that I'm going to share with you so there's something called high intensity interval training now I want you to think about not high intensity interval training where you see those people throwing that ball against the wall or people are sprinting on that lawn turf I want you to think about outside and your outdoors right let's say you have a neighborhood or you live in a neighborhood or maybe you live in an apartment complex and there's just some space that you can walk high intensity interval training in this sense is I want you to try walking for five minutes and then running for one, then walking for five, then running for one, and then maybe dialing it back over time. Maybe you're going to walk for four, run for two, then eventually you'll walk for three, then run for three, you know, so that way we can start building up that tolerance. So that way, by the end, you'll be running the whole 10 minutes. That's one way that you can start building up that tolerance. So you can start working on that running time. Also, another thing that you need to be working on this summer is you need to be working on ball control. I've done a ton of videos on ball control. You control the ball, the ball doesn't control you. And in the sense of ball control, that means passing to yourself. That means having somebody pass to you. That means giving somebody the ball so that we can pass to you so that way they're the target. Um, and you know, you're working on getting that ball to them. Having them toss left and right so you can work on getting your angle and tilting your shoulders. That is one way that you can start working on ball control and all you need is a ball. Working on setting. You can be seated and you can work on setting. You can work on putting your hands together and opening that window so that way you can work on that setting form. You can work on making sure that you're catching the ball. Somebody can toss you a ball and you're catching it in those setter's hands. That could be something that you could be working on. There are a plethora of things that you can work on in the summer to prepare you. I always, always suggest watching clips of volleyball. Now, when I mean watching clips of volleyball, yes, the Olympics are here and it's exciting watching Olympic volleyball. However, I want you to watch some clips closer to your skill level. That way you can kind of see the nuances of those who are around your skill level. It's not that's not saying that you can't watch Olympic games and that be something to strive to achieve, but I want you to watch something around your skill level, middle school volleyball games, high school volleyball games, so you can kind of see the nuances and the flow and it gives you a better understanding of that volleyball strategy, right? Also, you can work on your footwork. That means working on your left, right, left, or your right, left, right, and working on making sure that you're transitioning back. You can start by standing here, standing outside, transitioning like you're transitioning back off the net, coming right back on. That is something that you can work on at home. When you're doing conditioning, thinking about that high intensity interval training, you can also start working on, we really want to look at those dynamic stretches and those dynamic exercises because there is a difference between static and dynamic. Dynamic is exercises that get you moving and growing and going. We know that when you're passing the ball, you have to use a lot of your quadricep muscles, which means you got to squat. So maybe thinking about doing some squats or working on passing and staying low because if you know you have difficulty staying low perhaps getting down low and holding it and staying there that's one thing that you can do so that way it can help build that tolerance the thing is over the summer my coach told me a long time ago that volleyball players are made over the summer and they practice during the year we learn all of our new information over the summer or we want to try to learn as much as we can absorb as much as we can over the summer so that way when we go into the year we're just using what we know. If your school's having volleyball workouts, it's a great move. That way the coach can see you and you're visible. Think about if you were to just show up at volleyball tryouts and there's like 90 people there and they've never seen you, but 70 of them, which is unrealistic, 70 of them have been at workouts all summer. Who do you think the coach is more likely to go with? The person that they, she saw develop over the summer or the new person they've never seen before, right? So going to workouts is a great thing. Even if you have vacations planned or you don't have a ride or you just can't make it there, it's not as easily accessible. Even doing something like that is great. So number one, you can do weight training because a lot of these times they do weight training and that can work on building some muscle and they also do scrimmage so that way you can start to get to know some of the other girls on the team this is just some things that are thinking about that strategy so i hope that this video helped you have a better understanding of things that you should do to prepare for the season coming up please like comment subscribe also thank you to our sponsor i'm gonna leave the link in below in the in the description box with everything share this with somebody who needs it please like comment subscribe and i will see you guys next time